forms of quadratic functions. A quadratic function is a polynomial function of degree 2. The graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. The general form of a quadratic function is f of x, which is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a is not equal to 0. The standard form of a quadratic function is f of x, which is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k, where a does not equal 0. The vertex h of k is located at the following. h is equal to negative b over 2a, and k is equal to f of h, or f is equal to, or it's equal to f of negative b over 2a. Now, if we're given a graph of a quadratic function, we're going to write the equation of the function in general form. Number one, we need to identify the horizontal shift of the parabola. This is the value, this value is h, and then identify the vertical shift of the parabola, and this value is k. Number two, we're going to substitute the values of the horizontal and vertical shift for h and k. In the function f of x, which is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. And then we're going to substitute the values of any point other than the vertex on the graph of the parabola x and f of x. And then we're going to solve for the stretch factor, which is the absolute value of a. And if the parabola opens up, then we know that a is greater than zero. If the parabola opens down, then we know that a is less than zero, since this means the graph was reflected about the x-axis. And then we're going to expand and simplify to write in general form. Now, for example two, we're going to write the equation of the quadratic function from the graph. Write an equation for the quadratic function g in figure 7 as a transformation of f of x, which is equal to x squared, and then expand the formula and simplify terms to write the equation in general form. So here we're looking at the graph. Um, but again, we can see here that f of x is equal to x squared. So that means that our general form of our parabola would be the following. So we'd have the vertex at the origin, and we have these points, which means that when we plug in the value of 1 and square it, we get 1. We plug in the value of 2 and square it, we get 4. And likewise on the other side, if we plug in negative 1 and square it, we get positive 1. When we plug in negative 2 and square it, we get 4. So again, this is just the toolkit function that we have. So I'm plotting it on our graph so you can see what the original graph looks like. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to use, as we stated here, in step 2, okay, we're going to substitute those values for the vertical shift. So this is our new function. But since we already have f of x, we're going to call this g of x. Okay. So we're going to find out what happens here according to the shift. Well, that vertex moved over negative 2 units and then down 3 units. So that means this is the new vertex, which is negative 2 and then negative 3. Okay. And then we also want to point out, are there any other points that we can pick? Well, we can see that there's an x-intercept here and an x-intercept here, but it's not an exact point, okay? Meaning that it possibly is a decimal for where the x is located. So we want to see if we can find another point on here. Well, if we look at the y-intercept, we can see that the y-intercept is at the location of 0, negative 1. So these points are going to be critical for us as we move along. So looking at the vertex here, we can say that our vertex is hk. And since it's hk, then we can say that that represents negative 2, negative 3. Okay, now we want to plug that into our form g of x, so that's going to equal a times x minus, well the h value is negative 2, and the value of k is plus k, so that's minus 3. So therefore this becomes g of x, which is equal to a times x plus 3, sorry, x plus 2, squared minus 3. So 
So now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use this y-intercept to figure out the rest. So again, we can see from the graph from what we just found is that uh, it has shifted to the left two units and then down three. And then given a formula of the form g of x, which is equal to a times x minus negative two squared minus three, which gave us this, this form. Okay. Now what we're going to do is now we're going to take a look at that point and that point being the y-intercept. So we need a good point from the graph that we can use. So we're going to substitute the coordinates of the point on the curve, such as 0, negative 1, for us to be able to find the value of a. Okay, so we want to find out what a is by plugging in 0 and negative 1. So what's happening here is that we now have our formula. We know that because of our point that's given, we have 0, negative 1 from here. So this represents x, and this represents g of x. And so what we're going to do is now we're going to plug that into our function. So x is 0. So we're placing x here to be 0, and then we have g of x, which is negative 1. So g of x is now becoming negative 1. And now what we want to do is we want to solve for a, okay, because that is the stretch factor. So what we're going to do is, inside the parentheses, 0 plus 2 is 2, squared gives us 4 times a, which is 4a, minus 3 equals negative 1. And then we add 3 to both sides to get 2. And then we divide both sides by 4. And therefore, a is going to equal 1 half. So now that we found out what a is, we can now plug it into this formula up here. And so in the standard form, the algebraic model for this graph is going to be the following. g of x, which is equal to 1 half times x plus 2 squared minus 3. And now, if we want to put this in general form, now the standard form, again, let's go back and look up here, okay? The standard form from up here, the general form is this form. The standard form is what we just solved, because this is the standard form. Now, we want to convert this into the general form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. So what we're going to do is we're just going to expand this by taking x plus 2 squared and multiplying them together. So we have 1 half times x plus 2 times x plus 2 minus 3. If we FOIL this box method, however way you go about that, we get x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then we're going to distribute the 1 half to all three terms. So 1 half x squared, 1 half times 4x is 2x, and 1 half times 4 is 2. And then we can combine these terms, meaning 2 minus 3. So therefore, the general form is going to be g of x, which is equal to 1 half x squared plus 2x minus 1. Now notice that the horizontal and vertical shifts of the basic graph of the quadratic function determine the location of the vertex of the parabola. And the vertex is unaffected by stretches and compressions.